Japan a place known for its traditional arts such as its tea ceremonies, calligraphy is also home to dozens of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And of course, how can we forget is the birthplace of sushi, which is one of the most famous culinary exports. But Japan also has one problem. It's running out of young people. The population of Japan is aging and shrinking very fast. With a median age of 48.4 years, the Japan's government projects that by the year 2060, there would be one elderly person for each working age. Hi, I'm Rupa Balwa and you're watching The New Show. Today, let's understand the decline in Japan's population and the kind of incentives that the government has been trying to take to make it better. The nation's health ministry says marriage and birth rates in Japan have gradually dropped since the end of World War II. And over the past five years, they've hit an all-time low. Both have fallen a further 10%. Apparently, the transition of demographic patterns in Japan has been changing since World War II. After World War II, Japan was facing social and economic challenges due to its rapidly growing population. And to the government's surprise, the population was rapidly growing at a rate of 3.4% from 1947 to 1949. And this was all because of the booming post-war baby boom period. And to control this increased population, by the 1950s, Japanese were forced to take birth control and opt for abortion because of the poor after-war economic conditions. And this led to declined birth rate and stabilized it at 1.7% by 1957. But in the late 1980s, the widely used catchphrase 1.57 shock captured everyone's reaction because it was the country's lowest captured birth rate. So the government of Japan was highly committed and motivated towards increasing the fertility rate. And for this, several initiatives were implemented from 1990s to fix it. Even before the Angel Plan, New Angel Plan and Plus One policy were officially implemented, an interstate ministry was set up to make sure that the right measures were adopted this time. And the first pro-natal measure started in 1991 with a government guideline towards satisfactory conditions for healthy child rearing and the amendment of Child Care Allowance Law and the enactment of Child Care Leave Law. Let's try to understand what these plans were. In 1994, the Angel Plan was implemented to try to make raising children less stressful for the couples by offering to counsel these couples and also encouraging fathers to play an equal role at parenting. Later, in the New Angel Plan, the government was giving out payments to support parenting, where 26,000 yen was given out per month for per child, which was about 280 US dollars, and also envisioned convenient daycare centers. But due to lack of funds, it delayed the entire implementation progress. Now, let's fast forward to the current scenario. Do you know that Japan is offering families to move out of its overcrowded capital to revive the countryside towns and boost the falling birth rate? The Japanese government has announced fresh round of incentives for people to move out of the Tokyo region. And from April 2023 this year, families who are seeking a life in the greener pastures will receive 1 million yen per child. Surprisingly, this represents and about 700,000 yen increase on such payment on the plans implemented by the government. For example, Tokyo has the lowest fertility rate out of all 47 prefectures in Japan. And this is because of the current migration pattern that has led to deserted hometown with few children. For instance, in the riverside village of Nagoro in southern Japan, there were fewer than 30 residents back in 2019, with the youngest resident being over the age of 50 years. And also the village's last school shut down few years ago after its last tourist graduated. Now, this initiative comes on the heels of the latest decline in Japan's population statistics. As per the statistics, there were 125.7 million Japanese people in 2021, which is a drop down from a peak of 128 million in 2017. While a study in the medical journal The Lancet states that before the coronavirus pandemic, it predicted that Japan's population would contract 23 million by the end of the century. The government has been trying to decode the reason behind country's population decline and strongly believe that in recent decades, the Japanese have decided to get married later in life and have fewer children, which is a conscious decision made largely due to financial concerns. In January each year, Japan celebrates Coming of Age Day 
these young adults have plenty of life goals, but for many, marriage is not one of them. Also, according to Japan's cabinet office's 2022 gender report states that 25.4% women in the age group of 30 and 26.5% men in the same age group have said that they do not want to get married. I am worried. I'm turning 32 this year and I'm not married. Some experts also point out several factors such as high cost of living, limited space and lack of childcare support in cities makes it difficult to raise children which is leading fewer couples to have kids. And that's not all. According to the figures released by the Health Ministry in mid-September 2022, showed that just 384,942 babies were born in the first six months of 2022, which dropped completely 5% from the same period of 2021. Now let's try to understand how much Japan has invested in education or childcare that it still fails to entice people to get married, settle down and have more children. We have one of the longest um, maternity, leave, maternity leave entitlement. It's very clear, it's not working in Japan if you look at the birth rate. So quite frankly, I'm not really sure uh, how effective it is for the government to provide the longer uh, matern maternity leave. I think what is more important is the flexibility of the labor market. In 2017, the Japanese government announced that it would invest 2 trillion yen into a package of subsidies for elderly care and child care and education. The state-approved preschool is now free for children between the age 3 and 5 years old and low-income households with children below that age get free childcare. And since 2013, municipalities have created more than 500,000 new public daycare slots. Some Japanese towns and municipalities have gone to even greater lengths. For instance, according to The Economist, the Japanese town of Nagijo managed to increase the fertility rate from 1.4 to 1.9% in 2017 by offering new moms a gift worth 3,000 yen and subsidies on children's care, housing, health and education. Japan's investments have yielded some results because now more than 2 million additional women are working today compared to 6 years ago. But several obstacles still remain for parents with the preschool, which may now be free but it hasn't become more accessible. Approximately 20,000 children are on waiting list for publicly subsidized daycare according to the New York Times. In addition, the stigma around work and childcare still persists. According to the UN data, only 1 in 20 fathers took the advantage of Japan's generous policy of 30 weeks paid paternal leave in 2017. Mothers who choose to return to work after their maternity leave often face discrimination at their workplace and also feel the unequal burden of child-rearing responsibilities at home. The 2023 scheme of shift from Tokyo to suburbs concerns residents of the 23 wards of Tokyo as well as commuter cities in neighboring Chiba, Shaitama and Kanagawa prefectures. Seeking to move to one of 1,800 provincial municipalities, the government hopes that around 10,000 people annually will take advantage of the offer. But of course, there are conditions to this scheme and it states that one earner in each household must either start their own business in the locality or take up a job in a smaller or medium scale business there. And that's not all. The family must stay a minimum of five years in the same locality and if they fail to do so, they will have to repay the whole amount. But Japan is not the only country where the government pay people to move to the countryside. In 2021, Ireland started to move up to 68,000 government workers out of Dublin to its Our Rural Future Plan. Many countries have taken similar advantage of the increased flexibility of remote working that the pandemic has stimulated. Other examples include Albany in Switzerland, Spanish villages and Prisisi in Italy which is offering 34,000 euros to buy an empty dwelling and take up residency. There has been a long list of such measures in Japan since World War II. In the early 1970s, Prime Minister Kakue Taraka's government invested heavily on infrastructure development programs in Japan's provinces. This was partly an effort to boost employment and stabilize population. Japan's experience showed that how difficult it is to restore fertility to the replacement level, especially when a country has a sizable population and a persistently low birth rate. The number of deaths is expected to rise in Japan in the next few decades owing to its larger elderly population. This means that Japan has no choice but to strengthen efforts to sustain and hopefully boost fertility. To do so, Tokyo should help women and couples balance their work and family roles to lighten the heavy social and economic costs associated with the population decline.
Japan's labor market needs to become more family friendly while gender roles at home must become less traditional. Even if policy efforts to make the workplace more family friendly and the home more gender equal fails to raise the fertility rate and slow population decline, they will likely improve the well-being of Japanese families by improving the quality of family life. And that's all for today's video. Will you love to move to the countryside if the government was paying for it? Let me know in the comments below. See you in the next